Well, welcome everyone to Ashland, Nebraska, where tonight, beginning defense of the first ever state title in any boys sport are the Ashland Greenwood Blue Jays winning a dramatic contest last March against Auburn to propel them to their first ever state title. And today, a new season begins for them as they begin that defense that we talked about earlier against the conference full, full of the Arlington Eagles right here in Ashland, Nebraska. And folks, what a crew I have to work with tonight. Running the technicals and bringing you the great pictures tonight is the junior, Elliot Gosson. Of course, he's that terrific cross-country runner, baseball player right here at Ashland Greenwood. And the man on my right, the man that'll put the color to the canvas for you, is former Hastings All-American Jordan Wallman, who also had some experience winning the state title in basketball in high school down there in Beatrice for Jim Weeks. And so, Jordan, can you believe that we're already here? Doesn't it feel like yesterday when you said the famous words, I'm going to cry, when Evan Shepard hit that bucket from the left corner, and here we are. Yeah, I think the worst part about that, when I said that, it was, it was purely an emotionally driven statement, but then I started huffing and puffing, <laughs> and it actually sounded like I was fighting back tears. Uh, I think you were, though, partner. I, I was very overcome with emotion. Just just the special moment it was. But, yeah, it feel, feels like yesterday. Um, but we're back. We're back, and, and I'll tell you, the Blue Jays have another good team this year. They're, they're, uh, they kind of have, obviously, their eyes set on one game at a time. But, you know, I think they have the similar goals to what last year was. Well, of course, you played such a big part in helping a lot of these kids along the way. And, Jordan, here we are. We come into this season – and every new season, you have to replace seniors. And one of the things that we know that Kale Jacobson, Evan Shepard, and Max Parker, along with some other seniors, what they did a marvelous job of is providing leadership for this squad. So who steps into that void this year in 2022 and 23 for the Big Blue? Uh, you know, when you when you have a someone like, you know, I'm just going to talk about Kale to start. You know, Kale puts so much time in the gym. It's just, it just kind of the – the things that he does kind of get learned by other guys. So um, the number one product is that our team was very skilled last year. And then that kind of carries into this year. So Brooks, uh, Goni Concordia, incredibly skilled basketball player. I think he's going to kind of be that, that main guy. So Kale last year did such a job, great job creating for others. And, and really, Kale had gravity to him. Defenders were pulled to him whether they wanted to or not. I think that's going to kind of have to be Brooks this year. Um, Cougar's going to kind of step into a bigger role. Those are kind of two guys that are going to need to score the rock for us. Um, Cougar's going to have to drive more this year. He's not going to be able to sit back and hit kick out threes at 50%, which made him a 14-point-a-game kid as a, as a sophomore and then nine points as a junior. Um, so I think just kind of finding those, finding those things. You know, Brooks could kind of sit back and play Robin last year a little bit with Evan and Max out there. But Brooks kind of has to be Batman for, for the Blue Jays this year. And you know, Jordan, one of the things that you talked about as well, when we talk about replacing those, you think about Max Parker. And Max at 6'6", he really did a great job of patrolling the paint and controlling the big men uh, from our opposition. But tonight, we're going to see what some other kids can do because Arlington goes 6'3", 6'3", 6'5", and 6'6". Six, six. They have got some definite size. So talk about how uh, from Ashland Greenwood or who from Ashland Greenwood has to step up. Another, another thing that really may not be known is, is we lost our two best post defenders um, in Kale and Max. Uh, we lost our two best rebounders in Kale and Max. So, you know, we're losing 19 rebounds a game roughly, or maybe more like 14, 15 rebounds a game. Um, so, you know, your first thought is to put Cougar down there. Cougar's a 6'3", big body, but we can't really risk uh, Cougar getting into foul trouble. So a kid who's going to step up this year kind of, I don't want to say he came out of nowhere, but uh, Dawson Tease, he's a junior this year, number 35, uh, really has always been a big, strong, physical kid, but I'll tell you, he sprouted up to 6'3". He's springy. He's athletic. He's physical. Really kind of a tight end body. Doesn't doesn't play football, uh, but just really that big, strong, physical body. Um, and what, one thing that I saw at Burke and playing with them on Monday nights before the season is that Dawson really understands uh, what the team needs for him to be successful. So that's going to be huge. Uh, Jackson Ham's uh, going to play a big role this year in post defense. Guys like Luke Clark are going to have to step up. Maybe even like an Isaac Carson is going to have to step up. Um, but I think this is a good game for the Blue Jays to kind of look at how are, how are we doing playing post defense early in the season. 
Well, a lot of things to figure out and a lot of things we'll keep an eye on. Another thing for the Big Blue Jays that we'll be watching closely, and that is the offense of the Big Blue. As you know, Kel Jacobson, everything kind of went through him last year. Did a marvelous job of running the offense. So again, how will the offense look different this year without their quarterback on the court in Jacobson? You know, I think the first thing is that, um, you know, obviously five extremely skilled guys last year, guys that could all shoot the basketball, really revolving around Kale's create and kick, which, which was a great recipe for offense. This year, there, there really is seven kids on the Blue Jays that can shoot the three ball well, can drive, really break down guys, Cade Bridges, Drake Zimmerman, um, Dane Jacobson, um, all these guys grew, played ball in the offseason. They can all shoot. They can all drive. Um, so it was, it was interesting to Burke to kind of see that shot selection uh, as Brooks kind of worked to create for others. I mean, Luke Clark hit a couple threes. Cade Bridges hit threes. And then they can all play fast and play in transition. So I think, I think shot selection is a big thing for the boys this year. You're going to have a lot of opportunities to take shots with spacing and guys having to play true man on defense. Um, but it's kind of what shots are we taking, what shots are we making. Arlington brings, of course, a lot to the table. We know how good Tyler Spitzer, the head coach for the Eagles, is. And uh, we know they're going to bring some challenges. But, Jordan, from your perspective, what stands out more from the challenges or the most, I should say, the challenges that Arlington brings to the Big Blue you tonight? You know, they're going to run a 10-ball screen offense, continue out or continuity ball screen offense, um, which really revolves around post play. And they've had – all conference posts in the past. They've, every year they've had a couple guys that are averaging 14, 14 and 7, uh, 15 and 9, things like that. So um, I don't recognize a lot of the names on here, but kind of watching the JV games, they're showing that commitment to continuity ball screen. And culturally, they, they really value scoring on the inside. So uh, big team, really, really big team. So we'll, like I said, great, great opportunity for the Blue Jays to play some post defense today. Well, let's take a look at these starters here. And as Jordan mentioned, a lot of size for the Arlington Eagles. Let's get to the first one that isn't necessarily one of the big guys, and that's Karen Groth. He's a six-foot sophomore. But then after that, it gets big. Darren Olson, a 6'3 senior. He'll be starting in that backcourt along with Desmond. Cole, he's a sophomore, but he's six feet three inches tall. And then you've got Trent Coger, just a sophomore at six six, and Weston Wolberg, the lone senior starter, he is six feet five inches tall. So for the Big Blue, this is how the starting lineup will look, at least to start this 2022 season. Dane Jacobson, who averaged five points a game and shot 63 percent from the field, the six one junior will start at guard. Kate Bridges, he's a sharpshooter. A senior at six feet tall, he shot over 40% from three a year ago. We'll see what it looks like for him this season. Brooks Kissinger, we're hearing so many good things about what Brooks can do, a tremendous defender. But he also averaged 11 points a game last year. He is a 6'2 senior. Cougar Consum, a 6'3 senior who averaged just under 10 points a game last year, but his sophomore year averaged 14 a game. We'll keep an eye on Cougar and Dawson Teese. You heard Jordan talk about him, the 6'2 junior. He's a bruiser, averaged or had eight points in the unofficial opener against Omaha Burke on Monday night. So we are getting ready to go underway. And we talk about Kissinger. He's going to be the guy going up against the 6'6 Cougar. Kissinger at just 6'2. And the opening tip is won by the Big Blue as Kissinger alertly taps it away for the second time. So here we go, a little zone action to start for Arlington. Yeah, kind of a smash down 1-3-1. One, one. It'll be Bridges as they work the ball quickly. Down to Consum, the senior bounce pass at that high post. They kick it out. Here's Bridges for an open three. Big go! Uh, really, really pressed in. They're going to take away inside scoring, so get a nice high post, high post touch and then kick it out to the backside. Uh, shoot Bridges. him out of the zone. And we mentioned Bridges' shot. 40% from three land last year. Had that ankle injury late in the year. Wasn't able to finish with the team, but boy, he did a great job early on. And so the Blue Jays in that man-to-man. -man. Here's Koger, the sophomore, bangs it home and ties it at three. Uh, he hit just about every shot he made, he took in the JV game. He, it, looks, it looks like he's not super comfortable shooting it, but man, he, he puts it in. He eyed that one down, and now Jacobson the other way. 
Blue Jays gonna be patient, good ball reversal. Kissinger gives it up to Cougar. Baseline drive, pulls up, finds a wide open Dane Jacobson, and the great Dane makes it five to three. That, that's what really we're, we're gonna looking for. We're looking for guys that wanna drive and they wanna value that basketball on the drive. Cougar, traditionally the last couple of years, has not been a driver. He's already shown that earlier in the year that he's gonna put the ball on the deck. And the Blue Jays coming out with a little pressure here. Growth gets it off to the left wing. This is Olsen. And the Blue Jays here in this tough man-to-man. -man. Coach Mose credits the defense with so much success a year ago. As Wahlberg working against Cougar. And you hear the student body. They're chanting some defense here, Jordan. It's good to see the birdcage lively. And Olsen turns it over. And it'll be Blue Jay ball. Not, uh, not showing that continuity 10 ball screen offense that, we, that we're so used to. Um, you know, they, they have so many big guys out on the court, obviously valuing that on the defensive end that sometimes it lacks ball handlers. So not sure what their plan is, but we'll kind of watch and see what they're willing to do. And interesting that you say ball handlers. The Blue Jays here coming the other way. Jacobson finds a cut and cons them and a block. There's that size on the inside by the Arlington Eagles. I think it was Wahlberg who got the block. Yeah, and, and they, they are big. I mean, that sometimes coaches kind of jack up those numbers. You know, this guy's 6'6", six, six, this guy's 6'5". I think they are legitimately 6'5", 6'6", 6'3". They've got some size, and Drake Zimmerman comes in quickly here. Good look inside, and Jacobson gets the feed from dangerous Drake Zimmerman, and it's 7'3", and then Zimmerman almost comes up with a steal. You know, and one thing to watch out this season, Drake isn't in the starting lineup, but I, I was talking to Craven, and he said, whoever we start, whoever is the sixth man is probably one of the best six men in the state. Well, to your point, they love his physicality too, Drake. He's such a good defender, but he's really improved his offensive game is what the coaches believe. And there's a quick hands by Zimmerman. Jacobson on the floor, and it's going to be... Blue Jay ball as Dane was fouled. Yeah, and Drake's kind of been a spark plug. Even at Burke, he just, I mean, kind of there was a little bit of a lull there for the first couple of minutes. Drake came in and uh, really provided a lot on the offensive and the defensive end. Well, you can see already he's come in with a great feed on an inbounds, and then he tipped that away, and here comes Cougar. Can he get a three? Bingo! Great drive as the defense comes up to Drake. He doesn't force. He just jump stops and kicks out. Um, we talked about Brooks maybe having to do that a little bit, but there Drake does it. 10-3, Blue Jays in a couple of trays here. Getting a little separation early on. Wolberg doubled, nearly traveled, and then did he throw it away? Yes, he did. There's that Blue Jay defense. Stifling. I mean, they're just, they're just everywhere right now. They're not letting Arlington be comfortable. I heard Coach Moe's talking to the team before the game. Uh, and he just talked about making, making simple things for them very difficult, and that's what they're doing right now on the defensive end. So Jackson Ham checks in, as does Clark, and he's got the ball right now. They kick it back over. Consum from deep right corner, and that's a three ball to give it a 13-3 lead, Big Blue. Yeah, hitting shots right now, three for three from three. Uh, Blue Jays are red hot. Luke Clark in the game. We know his grandfather's listening back in Kansas tonight. And there's some good hands again by Zimmerman. Knocks it out of bounds. It'll remain Arlington ball. And you just look at the faces right now early on. And you can tell these Arlington players just a hair frustrated. The aggressiveness of the big blue. Yeah, I mean, Drake's, Drake's guarding all 94 feet right now. There's a switch on defense. No, Drake will find growth. And they kick it to Wahlberg. Wahlberg working in the paint. Olsen. And Coach Moe's up off the bench. He likes something left-handed work against Jackson Ham And Wahlberg with the bucket. Here's a long outlet the other way, though. Bodies flying everywhere. And a whistle. 13-5. Big bucket by Wahlberg. They needed it, didn't they? Yeah, they did. And that's, that's kind of what they want. They want to get guys on the inside that have space. Uh, getting a couple dribbles, spin move, two feet. Um, when I think back to Brant Hilsendinger, <laughs> I've messed that name up for five years. Uh, and then they had another tall, uh, blonde-haired kid. I can't think of his name right now. He's an all-conference player. That, that's how they scored the ball and that's how they wanted to. Good work as Consum's underneath. The ball tipped out of bounds off of Cougar, they say. And so it's 13-5. Arlington lost to West Point on Thursday night. The Blue Jays 
Got out to a rough start against Omaha Burke the first four minutes and then cruised to a 70-31 victory on Monday night in the uh, All-Star game. And now here's a pickpocket by Zimmerman. Zimmerman going in, kicks it out, finds a wide open Kissinger, just too much. And the rebound coming down to Arlington. Desmond Cole. Already though, Zimmerman just been a beast defensively, hasn't he, Jordan? I mean, he's, I'm enthralled. That is an excellent word to describe if you're watching Dreg Zimmerman. Good use of the vocab there. Back in is Wolberg, nearly traveled. Here's Groth, got up a three over Zimmerman, and then the rebound down to Bricks. Kissinger wants to run. Good look to Ham. He just drilled that pass and threaded a needle. Ham wasn't able to finish. Then a reach in and a foul on Drake Zimmerman. Yeah, I'm using this to kind of elaborate. I didn't want to talk too much, but just the things that Drake or Drake is doing right now, those are championship things, and everyone wants to score, and everyone wants to, you know, he's driving, he's jump stopping and kicking to a shooter. He's playing tough defense on a ball handler. Uh, he's, he's a championship player right now. Yeah, he is certainly making his presence felt here. The Blue Jays up by eight, 2.50 to go, first quarter. Blue Jays started the season, preseason ranked number three, and here's a steal. Dame running, two on two, waits, finds Kissinger. What an unselfish pass to Jackson Ham. And that draws a timeout by Coach Bitzer. And but you, you what? go ahead, Jordan. It, it can be kind of silly six minutes into the first game saying, like, oh, he's a championship player. Like, you know, but when you, when you talk about culture and you talk about uh, what guys see as their role and what does it take to get to that next level, I know how much Drake has worked on his skills because I see him in the gym all the time. And, and right now he's making the commitment to saying, I'm going to be part of a team. I'm not going to go out and try to create for myself. And so that's, that's what I mean when I say, air quotes, a championship player. Like he, he's doing small things that aren't, aren't glamorous, aren't sexy, but he's doing them and he's showing a commitment to them. Without a doubt. And what a pass that Brooks Kissinger just made. He could have most likely attacked the rim but he made that extra pass, and again, twice tonight, he has had to thread a needle through a very tight window. Yeah, and he, he, he kind of has to step up and become that, become that creator for others. You know, Jackson Ham's not going to create on his own, so how, how do you get Jackson involved? You would draw attention to yourself as the college basketball commit, as the most skilled athletic guy out there, and, and then you dish your teammates. So really happy with, with how he's playing as well tonight. Jordan referring to, of course, Brooks Kissinger has committed to Concordia and his brother Reese plays at Midland. That'll be a great battle on the NIA, uh, NAI court hardwood over the next few years. In the game now is Tim Howie for Arlington. There's Coger, pulls up, 15 footer, and will go. Good D by Jacobson. And he gets the board as well. Here comes Brooks, baseline drive. Look, look, top of the key they go. Luke Clark. And he won't get that one to fall, but that was so close. And the right shot. Here comes Growth. Howley with a good extra pass down to Wolberg, but look at Dane make that defense, and now he wants to run. Dane looks, dumps it off. Clark, Clark battling underneath, has his shot blocked, but he's fouled, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. You know, Luke, Luke's another kid, you know, as he takes that last shot, and then he gets in here. Just another breakdown kid. Uh, I mean, the, so deep on the bench. I, every time Luke shoots a three, I, I think it's going in. He hit two versus Burke. Um, I was talking with Coach Mose, and I was like, just let him shoot it. And Mose goes, absolutely. The kid is a, is a shooter, but there he is scoring on the inside. He's a senior. He's going to play a huge role this year. Yeah, he's a big body, 6'2", senior, strong. But that's what makes this Blue Jay team so tough, right? I mean, they, they're great inside. They'll attack the rim, but then they can knock down that three. Yeah, and... You know, when you talk about post defense, uh, it's not often do you go to a fourth option. You know, Luke is a guy that can, probably wants to guard guards, but you could put him on a post if you ever get in a foul trouble situation. Here we go, 16 to five. Blue Jays out with that early pressure, but Arlington beats it. Halley hits it off to Cole. Also checking in the game is a freshman, Oliver Ledehoff. So some good youth here on behalf of Arlington as well. There's Ladehoff, the freshman, kicks it out to Cole. Oh, 
And it looks like Dawson Teese got shaken up there on his, he collided with someone, but he's all right. And the ball is going to be knocked out of bounds off the big blue. And that's the other way that you guard the post is you, you understand rotations, you understand help coming over. So there, Dane up against a 6-3 guy. Brooks comes on the baseline side and helps him. Here's the inbounds up top. Can Cade Bridges steal it? Yes, he does. He'll, he'll tip it over to Jacobson. Dane pulls up for a three ball, and it won't go. But there's Cougar looking. Kicks it out. Cade wide open from three. Bingo! Another area where Cougs is going to step up this season is inside scoring and inside rebounding. You know, there wasn't a lot of rebounds to get last year when uh, Max and Kale got done, but you'll see Cougs hitting the boards. 19-5. One-handed pass underneath, but it went out of bounds off of Coger. 19-5. Now, Coach Mose is burning some calories tonight. He's hopping. He's jumping. He's done a couple of jumping jacks down there. He's feeling it. I think he's excited. I think he's excited for the year. Without a doubt. Bridges from a long ball three left corner. Won't go, and the board down to Coger. Halley in the paint. Gross says, let me skip my three, but he can't get it in Bridges. We'll pull down the board. Under 20 seconds to go here, Jordan. Got to imagine Coach Moe's really happy with what he's seeing. Yeah, Blue Jays are playing very well right now. Arlington staying back in that zone. Seven seconds. Brooks dribbles in, kicks it down. Jacobson dribbles through, dumps it off. Here comes Bridges at the buzzer. No good. And so we go to quarter two with the Blue Jays winning that first quarter 19 to five. Jordan, your thoughts on that one? Really good. You know, a lot of a lot of the, what this game looked like is, is how are the Blue Jays gonna look this year? How do things look different? Um, and they're playing fast, man. They, they're a good, good basketball team. And they've always been skilled. They've always been well coached, but you can just kind of see that they are a deep skilled basketball team this year. And what a great point. Jordan says Elliot Goss in a deep skilled basketball team in just one quarter. The Blue Jays have five players score. Your thoughts about the depth of this team from what you've seen early on? I think this is really a testament to their unselfishness. I think like, just when uh, getting a fast break, got three on two, um, got an open opportunity um, to score a layup, just one more extra pass and gets a no doubter. Like uh, the Brooks to Jackson Ham uh, layup a couple of minutes ago. And I think this team's going to lead the state, maybe the country, in assists. <laughs> well, a bold prediction here from L.A. right out of the gate here, Jordan. And you're nodding your head. You're not disagreeing with the junior. You know, I, I, Elliot, I like it. I, I like it a lot. And, you know, a lot of a lot of assists is hitting shots. And I know the Blue Jays are hitting shots. So they're good passing and good shot taking. Well, what you have to love about this, the Blue Jays knocked down four three-pointers. Cons him with two in that first quarter. K Bridges with two in the first. And, uh, you know, there's just a lot of elements you see early on to this team. Then you got Zimmerman's defense and some other great things. And here we go. Let's see what the second quarter brings. And the Blue Jays up 14. Number three ranked Ashland Greenwood Blue Jays taking on their Nebraska Capital Conference foe Arlington the last year that the Blue Jays will play in the NCC. They're joining a different conference. I believe it's called the Gateway Conference, right, Jordan? Trailblazer. Trailblazer. Here's Halley down on the block. Puts up a shot over Tees. Tees fights hard, pulls down the board. Here's a pass that's stolen by Grote that time. Like a defensive back on the football field. They get it down to Koger. Koger will settle down. Halley tries to step through. Left-handed off the glass, won't go, but there's Koger. Got a lot of arms there, uh, doesn't he? He's all arms in Koger, but look out. He's not afraid to shoot Jordan, and just a little short that time. Blue Jays running. Brex looks down left corner, back to Kissinger, reverses it quickly. There's a dump off on the block to Bridges, who looks for Brooks. And Jordan here is a gorgeous pass from Cougar Consum to a cutting Cade Bridges. Yeah, and I was, I was literally just getting ready to say sometimes you got to take the shot. You know, we're so focused on passing that you know, I would have loved Cade to go up, but then next thing you know, Cougar makes a beautiful pass, and Cade has a great finish. So and I'll, I'll eat my words. Yeah, yeah and, and the, the movement away from the basketball by these Blue Jays, it is just fantastic. And there is pressure, trap, and turnover. They're just everywhere. You know, growing up in Beatrice, there was this team in Lincoln called Small Fry. 
and there was requirements to be on the team. You had to be under 5'3", yeah. and you couldn't weigh so much. And I remember that. I used to hate playing them because they were just everywhere, man. They were so skilled, and they just there was no holes anywhere. Here come the Blue Jays the other way. I remember small fry. Bricks Kissinger, left-handed layup, glides through the air, and makes it 23-5. Smooth the cell. Kissinger, and now here's a double team and a reach in and a foul on the big blue. As Desmond Cole that time had his arm snapped, or I should say slapped, and now he will leave the game and into the game for Arlington comes Darren Olson, the 6'3 senior. You've got a freshman in there as well as Ledahoff. Halley, the sophomore. Then you've got Wolberg, the senior. And lastly, Koger, who's just always working, isn't he, Koger? Yeah, he is. He, did, he does a good job. He plays really hard. And here's a steal by Bridges. He read that one. Cade going to the rim, and he'll put it in. Cade plays so fast. Arlington's going to take a timeout, but you know, I feel like Kate, the hair on Cade's head is always just flying backwards because he's just going everywhere so fast. So here's a question for you. The Blue Jays Monday night got out to a little awkward start against Omaha Burke. Wasn't real pretty in the first four minutes. But tonight, what did they learn from that? Because, boy, they have come out on fire since the opening tip. You know, the only, the only thing that I would say about that, those first couple minutes at Burke, it, just, it, just, it almost felt like everyone was afraid to make a mistake. No one wanted to take the shot that was slightly contested, and it led to a miss. Uh, you know, we, they played at the shot clock that night, so it kind of forced them into some situations. But... Uh, tonight, it doesn't look like anyone's afraid to make a mistake. It doesn't look like anyone's afraid to make that extra pass, take that chance on defense. Could be a little combination of Arlington, maybe not as uh, skilled or athletic as Burke was, um, but they're just, they're, just, they're just going, and it's all gas, no brakes right now for them. I like that analogy. All gas, no brakes for the Big Blue. And here's that double team. Oh, it's a tough spot, but Halley does a great job of getting out of it. No look, bounce pass to Wolberg. Nicely done. Sophomore to senior, and it's 25 7. Kissinger. Being covered by Halley, the sophomore. That will be a big assignment for him tonight. Here's Brooks off the left elbow. Little ball fake, got past Halley, and boy, I think Brooks see, that time should have taken that one. Yeah, and great example. You know, I think Brooks' balance tonight has been so great. The shot that he did take, I loved it. Um, you know, but there, you know, just like you said, finding those rules. I, I agree. But you love the fact that he's so incredibly unselfish, looking for that extra pass. But I think he could have just reached that over the rim on his own. Here's Bridges for a three. Bingo! Cade can shoot it. He's got 13 already, does Cade Bridges. Here's a no-look pass. They beat the pressure again. The freshman has it rejected by Cougar. Blue Jays running. Zimmerman going. Step through. Kicks it out to Kissinger. There's that extra pass. Cougar in the paint, working against Wahlberg. Whistle, and they're going to call a block on Wahlberg. And that could have been on old Cougar, I think. Yeah. A lot, a lot of it is who, who initiates the contact. So, uh, yeah. It was kind of went into Wolberg that time. It was interesting. We, we watched Malcolm and uh, Auburn last night. And it was almost the exact opposite. They would, they would call the Auburn player there. It's say uh, Cougar, Cougar's the Auburn player. They kept calling him for the charge on that exact same play. And I didn't agree with it then either. So, I, I don't know what to call. Good answers. I have no idea. Well, Jordan just officiated a JV game before this. So, we've got the rules expert here. Here comes Konsum in traffic, knocked down, but he'll go to the line to shoot two. So Coach Mose did not like the fact there was not ball movement that time. I heard him say, move it. Yeah, it was a little, it was a little poundy, you know, just Coogs just man, was a man on a mission there. He's going to get to the rim and no one was going to stop him. Konsum hits that free throw, give him seven so far. Blue Jays up 29-7. As we mentioned, Bridges with 13 already. Here's the second free throw up and good. So many weapons here to try to slow down for the Blue Jays. And here's that pressure again, the 1-2-2. Two, two. Coach Mose like to run. Growth gets it across the timeline. And 
there's Cole, gets it back up top of the key. Olsen working hard, got it off the glass, and look at Dane Jacobson. He was not going to be denied on that rebound. Yeah, Dane, Dane is athletic, man. Here comes Clark. He'll dump it off. Zimmerman floats through the air and knocks it off the glass to make it 32-7. That was kind of a, a grown man move. Dre kind of had a guy draped on him, and he just kind of acted like no one was on him even. And here comes the double team that creates a turnover as Jacobson and Consum had Olsen near that, I call it the death corner there. You got your mid-court stripe, you got your out of bounds and two defenders. You got nowhere to go. Yeah, that's the trap zone. Uh, that's the area where when it's almost like a mouse trap. When they go in it, it, it triggers the trap. Zimmerman, Kissinger, back to Drake. Here's a three ball. Too much for Drake. And the rebound on Nicole. That's what they want to see a little more out of Drake this year. Yeah, I think it's good to see those things on film. Even if that's not Drake's strong point, he hit a three and took another good one at Burke. Uh, you want that on film, so teams have to kind of respect him defensively. The hammer, Jackson Hammond. Had a monstrous season this year from that middle linebacker position for the big blue football team. He's bodying up. Koger, but Koger with a beautiful move and just can't get it to fall, but what a good move by Koger. Back the other way is Zimmerman. As they'll work that right side and then step back for Brooks. Can't get it to go in the rebound down to Grove. How'd you like that move by Koger last time? It was a good move. And you know, uh, Jackson, it'll be interesting to see how, how he continues to guard these like kind of longer players. Here's a steal by Kissinger. Dumps it off to Dane. Dane looking back to Brooks. Brooks makes sure not to step out of bounds and then reverses the ball. Now that's good ball movement there by the big blue. It was. It was a good job getting running. You don't have anything. You don't panic. You stay with it. Reverse layup. Partially blocked. Hammer can't get it to go. But there's Clark. Luke Clark hits it home. It's 34-7. Jackson, Jackson, talk about rolls this year. Jackson's role is to rebound, defend, and get 50-50 balls. I thought he was great at Burke with that. Another steal here, Jordan, as Kissinger working. And the Blue Jays will pull it out and reset. Dane with those golden locks and getting in his eyes. But Kissinger says, I'll take that pass and knock home a bingo. And it's 37 to 7. And Jordan, a timeout on the, on the floor, 37-7. The Big Blue has been stellar in their opener so far. Yeah, very, very balanced. Um, you know, obviously the, the scoring was balanced last year as well. Uh, you know, I'm kind of excited for Brooks that he's getting some looks. Um, yeah. There, you know, there's no doubt he's, he can get by anyone in a hurry. Um, but the question is, you know, where, where do his points come from? What do his points look like? And he doesn't care about points this year, but you obviously, as he goes and scores the ball well, the Blue Jays are going to roll with that as well. So I, I, I've been really impressed with Brooks so far. Um, Kale did so much last year creating for him, um, and now it's kind of his job to create for others. So he might not see as many wide open looks as he did last year or good kick out threes, but he's doing a good job. Elliot, Jordan mentioned in the pregame, how do you defend the Blue Jays? Have you got any ideas after seeing this start with eight guys score already for the Big Blue? I don't know. All he did <laughs> came out in the in a one through one and then first possession, Kate knocks down a three. Come out and next possession or a couple of later. And then uh, Coog hits one. I'm not sure if they've switched back to man yet, or I've had a style on a two-three. But you can't let you can't let this team uh, shoot threes because we're gonna make because they're gonna make them. But they can also beat you inside. Yeah, that is the challenge, isn't it, Jordan? It is, and I'd, I'd be interested to hear if any of our viewers, uh, specifically Kale Jacobson, has any ideas on that. Is, on how to it, guard them. Is the Jim Rat listening tonight? Uh, Tyler, he said he's up in Omaha. They played Creighton not too long ago. Tyler's on the phone with him last night. He said he might tune in. So, Dale, shoot me a text if you got any, got any ideas. Well, the Jim Rat did some broadcasting for us, too. And he not only could play basketball, but he could broadcast. And here comes Kissinger, reaches in and says, jump ball. And there's that defense from Kissinger. You know, yeah. a lot of people think of him. Yeah as a scorer this year, right? But man, he plays such good D. Super underrated. I mean, he's, he's hyper athletic. He's dunking in pregame. He, he really grew in that regard. I remember last year playing DC West, he really took it on himself to, to guard some of their better players and he did a great job. Here we go. Blue Jays up 30, 121 to go.
Jacobson working the left baseline. The Great Dane kicks it back up top. Here comes Clark. Clark working, working. Good bounce pass to Ham, but wasn't able to haul it in. And so the Eagles will come the other way. Dawson Teese getting ready to check in. We've got a minute to go here in the first half. Blue Jays have been tough. Here we go. Here's a steal by Bridges. Bridges running. Long pass to the Great Dane. He pulls up, looks, works the middle, and then the ball gets out of his hands and wasn't touched, they said. And Dane has a little bit of a bloody nose. So Kale texted us, and he just said, he said, I'm always listening. He's on the way to Omaha now. So it sounds like he doesn't have a good plan to stop the Blue Jays. It, it could just be a credit to the Blue Jays' <laughs> offense this year. Uh, tough to stop them, mm. even for great basketball minds like Kale. See, Kale wants to be a college basketball coach, and this is his first test. We're expecting an answer by the end of the fourth quarter. Yeah, we won't share it, but we just need an answer, <laughs> Kale, because we're too lazy to think of one ourselves <laughs> <laughs> or not knowledgeable enough. Well, he has done a great job at Nebraska, and it's been so much fun to watch him. Man, was he fun all these years, and we've got 20 seconds to go. Koger in the paint, left-handed move, but he's fouled and won't go, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. 16.7, the Blue Jays have not given an ounce of air to this Eagles team, 37-7. to Koger. Got it. I, I really like this Coger. You know, he's a lot of arms, but man, you can tell he is intense. He comes to play. He, he got good minutes in the JV game, and I mean, you know, he, he had a good matchup with Derek Tonjes, who's, who's not a lightweight as a 6'4 freshman, and uh, he, he kind of was giving Derek everything he could handle on the defensive and the offensive end. Um, obviously way more inside driven than Derek is, but kind of shows his skill. Well, it's now 37-9. And Derek Tonjes, he had 14 the other night off the bench at Omaha Burke. Just a freshman, but a pretty big freshman. Here we go. We got three seconds. Brooks is going to have to force one up over Cole, and he couldn't bank it in. About the only bad possession that the Blue Jays had tonight, and that was because the clock was running down. But man alive, this Blue Jay squad, 19 in the first, 18 in the second. They lead 37 to nine, holding Arlington to just four points in that second quarter. If you're Coach Mose, how do you get the attention of this Blue Jay squad when you're up 37 to nine? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. I, I think that, you know, to, when the Blue Jays go to practice, they have highly competitive practices. Uh, there's just enough guys on the team that are strong, physical, and skilled, and they can provide a look. So, you know, I think that when, you know, Luke Clark gets in and he's in a different role, you know, he's He's subbing off the bench, but as we work further down, Luke comes into a different role. Now, Luke, we want you to get out there and try to score, really handle the ball. I think that from that regard, it, it kind of takes care of itself. You know, Drake transitioned from a defender and a glue guy role to we want you driving and trying to score. I think that increases engagement um, overall because it's not like there's clearly defined roles in a top five and a second five and a JV five. You know, I think everyone – is good enough to play and play a lot of minutes. So, I don't know, it, just, it creates a competitive situation. That's kind of the, the culture stuff that we talk about a little bit. And Elliot, your thoughts here on this first half and what you've seen so far? I mean, sorry for any of the viewers at home, but Ashland's fast and I'm having to yank this camera around. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm trying to set up a, to watch Arlington play. Next thing I know, it's a uh, Brooks Kissinger just streaking down the floor. I think that's I think that's going to be the thing. Coming. Is here? All right, here comes right Coach. There. We were calling Coach Hubert. He's going to join us here at halftime to talk about a tough loss earlier tonight. But, man, they're playing a little bit shorthanded as well. Yeah. And uh, they've got a lot of players uh, that, are, that are banged up. And so we'll talk with Coach Dave Hubert, the head coach of girls basketball. Coach, I think we might put you – that way we can get the camera on you. If we put you here, we can get you out, your mug on the screen. So here comes Coach. All uh, right. Coach, thanks for joining us here. And, yes. you know, listen, a tough one earlier. You lose 43-30. But look, I mean, you come out firing in that first quarter. Yep. And I had a feeling you loved the start to your team. So talk a little bit about the start and how you, how you played early on. Yeah, we did. We, um, um, you know, in basketball, you make shots, you win, right? Uh, we hit two threes. I don't know how many did we take. I don't know. 
20? I've got you 21, two of 21. <laughs> You're not gonna win a lot of games going two for 21. But coach, let me ask you this though. I thought the threes you took were there. I mean, yeah, they were good. I had to encourage you, right? Did you feel like the shot selection was bad or did you just no, feel like no, you just no. gotta knock them down? No, our kids that took them were the right kids to take them. We didn't have bad threes by any means. Um, we're, we're definitely disappointed. We're a better team than that. And, and you know, we really, we know we're banged up a little bit with Jenna being out, Emma's out there one arm, uh, Pike's not playing, but we still think we're good enough that we're disappointed in the loss. We don't want to use that as an excuse. And, and talk to me, Coach, I know exactly. And we chronicled it on the game. Olivia Pike, we hope to get her back. You know, we'll find out Monday. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, you've got Emma Keith, who had such a spectacular year a year ago, playing with one arm. And so we talked about that, but how did you feel like, when you say you're disappointed, what specifically stood out to you that didn't make you happy about that loss? Well, um, I think the when you look at a year ago, the Arlington team, they're young. We're still young, too. I mean, you know, we got one senior playing. Right, right. So, but I... Even with having those kids out, we are capable of making those shots. We, we work awfully hard. We don't cut anything short. Our practices are two and a half hours. Maybe that's part of it. Maybe we're, we're putting too much. I don't know. But um, we're, we're better than that. And the girls know that. And it's a long season. I mean, you know, you're probably not going to go undefeated. This, you know. And so um, I think we're just... We're capable of shooting better. From the free throw line was really disappointing. We're six of 15. Yeah. And that, I'm pretty disappointed in. We spent a lot of time working on shooting, and, and I was disappointed that I didn't get to see it on game night. Yeah. You know, one of the other things I thought you did very well, Coach, you out-rebounded them tonight as well. He ended up with only 13 turnovers. I don't know if that's what you have. Nine in the first yeah. half, just four in the second. Yeah. So it seemed like, you know, that, that Emmy Tim, tough freshman guard, she, oh, she kind of caused some damage, but you guys really responded, I thought, in the second half. So talk about those takeaways as well. Um, no, you're right. We, we felt that we, we were, they're young. They got two freshmen out there starting. Yeah. And we felt that we were the more mature team physically. So inside, that showed up on the boards. And I thought Bree played really well for her first start ever. Bree chef door. Um, in the post, had the first five points of the game. Yeah. Um, Bree competed well. And, you know, I, I think we, we, the kids, the the, the thing that I, I would say that was, 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 gives me hope is that they didn't, they didn't fold the tents. They didn't fold the tents. It was looking pretty tough there for a while. And then Paige hits that three. All of a sudden we're in an eight point game with two and a half minutes left, three minutes. Yeah. It, it, yeah. You make shots and things get easier for you. I want to hand this off to Jordan Wallman here in a second, but you told me before the game, you know, for us to be successful, we got to be, we got to finish. And again, you played them toe for toe in that fourth quarter. You know, uh, how were you? Did, did you see some of that starting to, to happen for you? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, until you watch the tape, there's just so much going through my mind. I, I, I was just, I didn't think we would ever be that cold that long. Because JC, Ars, uh, Reagan, and Paige, I, I know uh, Pike a year ago was our best, best three-point shooter yeah. percentage-wise. Those three can really shoot it. And I just, I didn't think that they would be that cold for that long. And I know that's going to turn around. Jordan Wallman's got some questions for you. You know, it, I, it breaks my heart to see Olivia go down, and I, and I, pray, I pray for the best for her. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you get you get JC back probably for the probably her healthiest game. She's a year young, year older. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and Paige got all that experience last year, and Bree has grown so much. Yeah. Uh, I can see that in the first two possessions, how much more comfortable Bree is. Oh yeah. You know what what is that as you look to the rest of the season? That what is that development piece kind of like? You know, what do you think about? You know, let's talk about JC in her first game back, really. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're right. You're right. First full after being gone most of last year. And I don't really know if it's a question as much as it's just like, no. you know, as, as a coach, and I keep hearing you say the word disappointing because you have such high expectations. But, I mean, I don't, I don't know if J.C. Fangmeyer will ever miss that many shots. No. It's almost I, like she, I don't, I, no. she's so excited, like just energizer bunny going out there and she's getting everything. But no. I guess I want to give credit to you because Bree 
Bree looks so much more comfortable out there, and I can tell Gertis is more skilled now. Well, they had a Bree had a good softball year, so her confidence is up. Yeah. Bree is starting for a reason because she she's athletic. Yeah. She she hustles. She works. So she and she's only a junior, and so these kids have got a lot of growing yet. And so we're not going to put that on the first game yeah. and label them as maybe underachieving or something. No, they're they we they will just keep getting better. And but as a coach, it's your job to have standards and have expectations for your girls. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's good. And I give all credit to Arlington. That that Tim girl, she's good as it gets. Skill. Yeah, she's really so good. so so skilled. And they they've got a good program. They do. They do. And they a year ago they struggled a little bit, and things weren't you know the Grupples girl that. Was it Grubles? Yeah, Grubles. That, it was that, yeah. one state track by herself. Didn't 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 come back and play and just basically wait and moved on and, and was injured. So they kind of went through that. Yeah. And now they 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 uh, they've got a nice little group going there. Yeah, for sure. Well, coach, listen, we know great things are coming, and I know you're dealing with a few challenges. You know, yeah. you're banged up. Yeah. And uh, there's no doubt about it, though. I saw some great stuff. The first and fourth quarter gives yeah. you a lot of excitement. Oh, I'm it sure. does. So, we, yeah. we won't. Yeah, they'll they'll bounce back. Well, we got Mark Adele we're going to work in here, but Coach, thanks. thank you for coming up. We'll yep. see you Tuesday night. Thank you. All right. All right. Let's get Mark Adele on here to talk a little bit about those numbers in the first half. Thanks, As he gets that headset on, and Mark, uh, well, what's it look like? Great. We're our, we are 14 of 26 from the field, 57%. 6 of 14 from 3 for 43%. Brooks Arcade Bridges is three for five, and Cougar Consum is two for two from three. We are three of four of the line. Not a lot of free throw shot. Not a lot of rebounds either on our end because we've been shooting so well, and on their end because they have turned it over 15 times. If you get a turnover, you don't need a rebound, so we've out-rebounded them 10 to eight. They've got one offensive. We've got three offensive. Okay. So Oh, we'll see you at the end of the game. I like that noise, Mark. Thank you so much. Mark having a, actually probably a little easier night tonight because the Blue Jays are putting it through the, the, the hole so much, he doesn't have to calculate as many boards and a lot of other things that he normally has to do. Yeah, staunch on the defensive end. We know Coach Mose loves his single-digit quarters, and uh, giving him nine points in the half means that you've got two single-digit quarters. So playing pretty well overall right now. Well, I'll tell you, Tyler Spitzer is a heck of a high school basketball coach, and you know that he went into that halftime and had an opportunity again just to kind of settle his team down and get back to some basics. Look, you're down 37 to 9. Uh, so, again, you're really kind of looking at just trying to win and compete in this second half, aren't you? Yeah, and oh, Blue Jays coming out, and it looks like one through one. So, Coach Moe's going to mix it up. A little chess match going on between Moe's and Spitzer. And you've got Bridges in there. They get it down on the block, but it's going to be Wolberg just losing the handle and threw it out of bounds. So to start here in the second half, it looks like Dane has, has got a little blood, so he's going to have to come out. His, his nose is bleeding. Um, so Drake Zimmerman comes in quickly for him. Dane kind of got an elbow in the nose in that first half, and it started bleeding. So you've got Brooks Kissinger, Dawson Teese, Cougar Consum, Drake Zimmerman, and Cade Bridges. And for Arlington to start this second half, Wolbert, Growth, you got Cole in there as well as Coger. Here's Brixey on and going to pull up, try to hit that shot, but to give it off to Drake Zimmerman, and he's fouled on the way to the rim. So Drake will shoot two. Yeah, just physical play from Brooks. You know, I don't think he expected to be that wide open, but, you know, even there, you know, just kind of talk about Drake for a sec. He kind of went through it last year a little bit in JV. Uh, Layups, you know, tried to put a tried to put a little more finesse on shots sometimes. Um, just really, really looks like he's under control. Looks like he's just grown in his ability to take contact and accept contact for how strong he is. Um, love to see that from Drake. Three points for Drake makes it 38-9. And you know, Jordan, I'd love to get your thoughts on this. One of the few times I've ever heard a coach say, "Here's a steal by Zimmerman." Zimmerman's fouled. He knew, actually, really smart foul by Growth because he knew Zimmerman had a free path to the rim, and if he doesn't hold him and foul him, it's two points. And it, what was going to happen was Drake was going to put one off the backboard for Brooks. Brooks, uh, I'm the serious. Following. I'm serious. Brooks has gotten very athletic over the year. I mean, Brooks can dunk two feet, two hands pretty easy. 
Well, we saw all those dunks last year from Kale and Max Parker. And boy, were they fun to call. I hope we get a few more this year as Brooks kind of working, step through, shot up no good, but he's fouled. And he'll go to the line to shoot two. And it was, it was literally kind of one of those deals like where, uh, you know, I don't work out with the kids as much as I used to, but I, I go on Monday nights in the fall to play with them and I'm standing underneath the rim and Brooks kind of gathers with two. And next thing I know, you know, Brooks is putting one down and I'm staring up at him. Uh, I mean, Brooks can really, really jump. Well, that first one misses. Yeah, I tell you, he is springy. The way I'd call him, man, he's bouncy, springy, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, Jordan Shiles said it best. You know, one of, a real sign of athleticism is how quickly you can stop. And Brooks, Brooks stops, goes really quick, just very twitchy. So back the other way, 30-point lead. Coger not able to connect there. Bridges with a long outlet to... Kissinger, beautiful pass down to Drake, and Drake waited for the defense. Should have gone up high, I think, quickly, but blocked out of bounds by Coger. When you got 6'6 guy following, though, you're going to be just a hair hesitant, aren't you? Yeah, and, you know, maybe looking for a foul there. I, I don't know if he didn't get a foul there. I thought it was a little arm contact, but if he finishes with the outside hand, he's going to get that there. Back to the way. Here comes Cougar going hard to the rim. Pull up, and I think he traveled. Yeah, he just slid a little bit. So that's the travel. Now, to me, Jordan, tell me if, you're, if, if you think I'm right on this or if I'm wrong. Cougar, to me, looks much bigger and stronger this year. Yeah, and that, you know, like when we talk about post defense, that's why it's so easy to put him in the first category. Oh, that's your post defender. I mean, he is 6'3 and strong. So they get it down in the corner to Olsen. He's going to pull up and try to shoot over Cougar. Tipped around by Dawson Teese. Dawson battling, and he's fouled by Cougar. We really haven't rang Dawson's number too much today. He he played great. I think he had eight points in the in the Burke game, if not if not more. All off easy dump down layups. Obviously today with so much size, it's gonna be hard for him to get around. But there, if you see it on camera, he's he's flying around for rebounds. Very athletic. And by the way, that is the fourth team foul on the Eagles. Consum. Dane in there, he's got some tissue in his nose, and here comes Bridges. Bridges will shoot a rare air ball. You don't see that from Cade. Might have been partially blocked as well. So the Eagles against this 1-3-1. Coach Moe's getting a little opportunity to work this. Here comes Desmond Cole. In and out for him. Oh, boy, Desmond had that down. And back the other way comes Bridges. Cougar, left-handed dribble, all the way to the rim, high off the glass. He's showing he can go to the rim as well. Yeah, really. I don't even know that the last one he is. Arlington's going to go ahead and take a full time out here. But even on the last one where he traveled, you know, you love to see Cougar taking advantage of his shot fake, getting by guys, and then having that lead to creating for others. Uh, we've seen Drake do it today. We've seen Brooks do it today. Uh, that's something Cougar's going to have to kind of change from the previous two years. And that's what I want to ask you, Jordan. Is that a part of his game? I don't recall Cougar going to the rim as well a year ago as I've seen tonight, or is that just a misnomer? Or do I, was I just thinking of him as an outside shooter? I don't know if he necessarily needed to. Uh, you know, when he played with Jared Napsinger, uh, he was getting to the rim a lot. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other kids that were in, in Jared's class back then, but there's been other guys that have always created for him. And as a sophomore, you know, he wasn't maybe ready. He's not the quickest kid. He's not the most hard line drive, but um, he definitely did it all fall. All fall in their skill sessions, it was super intentional for him to get downhill. And, and he had some troubles with those travels. You know, in the middle of a four on four pickup game, you know, Coach Mose would call him for a travel. And he'd argue and he'd say, No, that's a travel. Uh, so you, you grow into it and it takes time. And so, but no, to answer your question, he, he has added that more. He's always been able to do it and skilled, but uh, definitely more intentional this year. Well, Coach Mose, what a staff. I know we talked about it a lot last year. Coach Mose has shown just so much, obviously, uh, you know, it, it really just so so many smarts by the, the staff he's put around him and Jordan Child and Nate Skirdla, Tyler Craven, Justin Appleby. Uh, I mean, what a staff he's put together. And, of course, Mose, uh, I don't know if there's a guy smarter about basketball than that guy. Definitely, definitely knows his stuff and commits a lot of time to it. And, uh, he kind of knows what works, and he's kind of cut the rest of it out, really streamlined the process. Foul there on the Blue Jays as they're going to whistle that on Cade Bridges, his first. 
And of course, a guy named Jordan Wallman has been very involved with this program as well over the years. Well, we're kind of getting to the getting to the age where uh, you know my my influence is felt less and less. It, you know, I don't know if I've ever coached any of these kids, so uh, you know, it's time it's time to start wrapping up that false credit you've been giving me to. <laughs> well, back the other way. Now, listen, I know you. You've coached and uh, taught my kids. I know sometimes coaching is when they walk down the hallway. We got a whistle. Actually, someone stepped out of bounds. Nope, it's going to be a foul. Sometimes that coaching happens when you walk up and down the hallway at school. Sometimes that coaching happens when you give a bit of encouragement after an off night in high school. Uh, you know, I know there's guys like you and Brad Jacobson, and, you know, all of those guys play a role in that. Yeah, it takes a village for sure. But so, no longer a foot soldier, if that's, if that's what you mean. I'm not in the trenches anymore. Consum, give it up here to Dane Jacobson. Back they go. Bernie Embody, the great player for the Wahoo Warriors years ago. As Jacobson will drive the left side, he credits uh, a guy that never coached him at all for putting him on the right path in high school, saying, hey, listen, here's a shot by Bridges. Yeah, but before that shot went through, there was a foul on the big blue. And let's see if they're going to whistle this on. Uh, credits, uh, you know, a, a teacher, school, never taught him. Said, get you out for cross country, work on basketball. Bernie Imbod became a four-time state champion. And my point about that is that, again, sometimes it's not that direct coach who can make the big influence in your life, right? You know sure, this. Sure, I'll, I'll take Whether it. it's you or somebody else. I'll take a, I'll take a compliment, Tim. Thank you. It's very nice. <laughs> uh, well, when it's 41-9, to nine, you get into these conversations, yeah, right? Yeah. Here comes growth. His shot is blocked. Here's a dunk. Here goes. Well, Brooks laid down. Oh, he just took a little misstep. I think he was thinking about it, huh, Jordan? Yeah, he's mad right now. <laughs> He'll drive the left baseline. Do it the hard way, but he's fouled. As Desmond Cole came up. You know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I want him to dunk that because I, I just sound like I have no idea what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> Because, you know, I remember Reese, you know, Reese obviously grew so much more after yeah, college. You know, Reese he can, did. Reese can dunk pretty easily now. Uh, you know, I, I, I feel the pressure. I feel the pressure to, to see him put one down. And Brooks hits that first one. And by the way, he's talking about Reese Kissinger, the brother of Brooks Kissinger, who's playing at Midland. Here's the second free throw up, no good. And back the other way come the Eagles. 42-9, to nine, they're down. Getting some work against this 1-3-1. As Desmond Cole will get it down to Coger. They're working that right side, and boy, the Blue Jays still getting after. Here's Coger for a three ball. He'll miss a little short. And Kissinger wants to run three on three. Looks around for a little help, finds Dane down on the block. Here comes Zimmerman with a drive, but nothing there. Koger again, good defense by the big man, and they bring it out. Coach Spitzer up off the bench. He's putting his hands together. Still coaching hard. Here comes Kissinger for a three that won't go, and Groth with the board. Groth in a little trouble. And here comes Zimmerman. Oh, he came so close. Look out. Drake's into the third row. But he found a man underneath the Koger. Koger doubled. And look at this Blue Jay defense just get back quickly and get into it. Here comes a shot by Desmond Cole that misses everything. I mean, we're all out of sorts there, Jordan, yet the defense comes back, and here's a pass to Zimmerman, and there's that left hand. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're everywhere right now. Like you said, Coach Mo said he wants to make the, the, the simple things hard to do. Hey, had a huge text. Uh, yeah. Give a shout out to my buddy Scott Parson. Yes. Scott runs Arlington Strive. He's their media teacher. One of course. The, one of the Strive leaders in the state. Uh, he's my go-to for questions, and he's also my my best golf coach buddy. Uh. So at golf, sometimes it meets coaches get the chance to play a little bit. Scott and I, we got paired together. Gosh, I want to say it'd be four or five years ago at. at at DC West invite, and we haven't ever looked back. We always play together. You know what? Here's the thing. I guarantee you Scott knows how you mark your ball on the green to go putt, and then when you go back, you had a six-foot putt, and then when you put the ball back down, it's like five and a half feet. I'll, I'll tell Has you he what, experienced that like I have when I've, I've golfed with you? I'll, I'll tell you what. Golf coaches are very generous on gimme putts. Nobody, <laughs> nobody wants to see double bogeys on that scorecard. <laughs> 
He has done a phenomenal job with Strive up in Arlington. Uh, very generous guy. Super generous yeah, guy. Yeah. Gives his cameras for our Jack Murray wrestling yeah. invite. He, he always answers my text. Big into FCA. Uh, Scott's a great guy. Well, glad he's listening back home there in Arlington. And back come the Eagles down 44-9. to As Koger, top of the key, working against the hammer. Jackson Hand. Backed him up, turned around, jumper fade away, won't go. And there's Derek Tonjes, the freshman who just checked in the game. Derek running at 6-4. Kicks out Isaac. Carson checked in. Bingo for Isaac. And that's one of the things that Derek does really well. Derek's going to get a lot of rebounds because he's 6-4 and athletic. Uh, and then he's going he's to run. And he handles the ball really well. And listen, while we were chatting about Scott, you got Landon Mose that checked in a freshman. Isaac Carson, the junior. Walker Grell, the senior. You got the hammer, Jackson Ham in there. He's a senior. And the freshman, Derek Tonjes. With 1.26 to go here in the third. Blue Jays up 47 to 9. As Halley will work it, they get it down the block against the hammer. Here's a shot up that will roll in and good by Wahlberg. Good opportunity here for the big blue here. Derek Tonge, as we mentioned, 14. Here comes Landon Mose, the coach's son. Good left hand dribble in their paint. Very fu fundamental is Landon. Oh, and there's body crash, and they're going to call a block on Halley. Uh, Halley got up quickly. He didn't like the call. Yeah, you know, it was, I'll tell you what, it was tough to work the JV game today because, you know, I'm known as like the official and I've got an opinion on everything. Yeah. I felt a lot of pressure to call a good game. You know, and especially I did Ashland, you know, teach at Ashland, but uh, so I'm, I'm going to kind of keep, start keeping my mouth shut about refs and all that stuff. Just stay in the compliment <laughs> section. Well, you normally do. I've got to tell you, as the Blue Jays work this around the perimeter, great feed from Tonjes, and they kick it out to Moe's. Moe's with a good ball pass here. Look at this movement as Moe's will try three ball, and a freshman just a little short hammer. Can he save it? He can't. But, hey, how about that ball action? It was, it was great. I mean, and all these guys, you know, Landon is so so skilled. Maybe, like, just a little physically he needs to get there a little more. Uh, you know, Isaac athletically can hang with anyone. Derek needs to grow a little physically as well. These, these are all great basketball players. Oh, that's not good. No. And growth is down. It looks like he took a bad step. And, of course, he's in a lot of pain. So they're going to work with him. Yeah, it looks Hate like. to see that. Looks like an ankle, you know. You know, sometimes those sprains uh, can be very, very painful, but he's kind of writhing a little bit. He's not in a great shape right now. 27 seconds to go in the third, and Coach Spitzer out there quickly as well as the trainer. And so Coach Mose now uh, working with his troops over here as the Blue Jays. Really, uh, you know, Jordan, I think the thing that you can say is impressive about the second group that's come in, they've continued to move the ball well. They're looking for good shots. Uh, really a lot of what we saw from that first group. So you see it coming with these younger guys as well. Yeah, and just good basketball. You know, these, these guys are, they're not the most phenomenal athletes in the world. It's not like maybe, you know, you don't have uh, All-State. And he's getting up, he's walking around. That's good to see. Yeah, Growth will walk to the... But he's limping a little bit, but he will walk to the bench, which is good to see. You're not seeing track stars out there, guys that are winning the 100-meter dash. You're not right. seeing 40-inch vertical guys. You know, you're seeing fluid players that handle the basketball well. And that's that's Landon Mose. That's Derek Tonjes. These, these guys, they know the game of basketball. They know the nuances of it, and, and they've played a lot in their life. Well, they sure love basketball too, don't they? They do, and they're, they're all in. They get it to Koger in the paint. we got to reach by Grail, I believe. Yep, they call Walker on the reach. 14.2 to go here in the third. The Blue Jays up 47 to 11. In their opener. Here comes Wahlberg. You heard the coaching staff yell out Texas, so let's see what we see here. Here's a shot by the freshman that won't go. That is a lot of Hoff. And I think he's going to go to the line to shoot two. I'll tell you, the mistake I made last night is I went to Malcolm Auburn down in Malcolm last night with the coaching staff. And uh, I, I just had a lot of choice words about the block, block charges. You know, they called about five or six of them. They went against Auburn, and I, I thought those were game-changing 
call. So on the way home, I'm riding with Shia, and Shia goes, hey, you're doing our JV game tomorrow, right? I said, <laughs> I said yeah. And so Valley's in the stands. and so it, was, it was a rough crowd over there in the NPR gym. <laughs> well, there's no doubt they're going to let you hear it a little bit. And here comes Lando at the buzzer. Oh, and he wasn't able to get it to go, but good rotation on that shot and tightly contested. So after three, Blue Jays up 47 to 13. And uh, again, the quarters they've given up here. And Elliot, we'll, we'll let Elliot jump in here. Elliot, Blue Jays have given up five points, four points, and four points in these first three quarters. What are you seeing from this defense? I mean, a lot of it's just they're not they weren't letting Arlington take a lot of shots. They're like up a uh, they're just really seeing Drake picking up a their point guard, walking him uh, down, getting him some jabs at the ball, and then when uh, just up at like the spike line on the court, just playing right on uh, their guards to uh, just force turnovers and not let them get down into the paint where Blue Jays are a little bit weaker. Such a good point, and you know, he mentioned how Drake too can kind of just disrupt your offense, not so much necessarily taking the ball away from you, but when you come up, he's gonna harass, he's gonna let you know he's there. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of defense is just kind of your want to. You know, I think I think a great, for the kids at home, you watch in Nebraska, you wanna watch Kale, watch, watch Bando, uh, Emmanuel Bando, Bandemuel, I can't even know how to say his name, but I call him Bando. I mean, that kid just, wants to play defense so bad and he's doing the little things right. Drake just wants to play defense and when you understand those small nuances and you really have a lot of want to, uh, that's how good defense happens. So here we go to start this fourth quarter. Kate Bridges tacks the rim, wasn't able to get it to fall and the board coming down to Wolbert. And the freshman working it out here, Leda Hoff. They'll spin it around here as the Blue Jays have now gone back into their man-to-man. -man. As Dawson Teese in there working against Wolberg. You've also got Brooks Kissinger, Dane Jacobson, Kate Bridges, and Cougar Kahn's The freshman Ledehoff in the paint, spinning, kicks it out. He's a good talent as well. Wolberg puts it up off the glass, won't fall, and Brooks and Cougar fight over it. Brooks comes out of there with it. 47-13, Cougar for a three. Off to the right side of the rim, and there's gonna be Desmond Cole. Good job on the block out by Cole. Yeah, uh, Arlington with their size, they're gonna beat teams up on the boards all, a lot this year, I and mean, they, they are huge. One thing about Arlington, here's a step back by Olsen, missed it, is that with Coach Spitzer's team, you know that they're going to always be very fundamental. I mean, Cole did a great job of just riding that Blue Jay all the way out. I mean, they do a lot of good things fundamentally. And this is going to sound crazy, and I don't want to take up the Blue Jays' possession here. Uh, actually, no, you're fine. You're good. We're on TV. Here comes Kissinger, <laughs> kicks it out to Bridges. What's your thoughts one on of, that? One of, the, one of the worst matchups for a tall team is, is, an, is a small, skilled team. It sounds crazy, but... I mean, if you are a lot of 6'3 guys, one of the worst things you can do is put a bunch of 5'10 kids out there that can all run, dribble, and shoot. So while, while it seems like an obvious advantage in basketball, this is probably one of the worst matchups for Arlington this year. Uh, if, if I'm Arlington, and as I move throughout the season, if I run into a team that plays through the inside or destroys on the, re on the boards, you know, they're going to match up really, really well. Uh, Blue Jays just being kind of short, skilled, athletic, and and fluid is, is a really tough matchup for them. And Arlington right now trying to get something going. Offensively, there's Dawson Teese. Can he get a steal? No. But he pushed Wolberg all the way out to midcourt. Disrupted that offense. And here comes a turnover. No, great hustle by the freshman. And now we got a whistle and a timeout. As Coach Spitzer says, let's talk about it. 5.30 to go, 47-13. And Jordan, let's talk about what comes behind this game for the Big Blue. They've got some really interesting matchups this year. Of course, they got the Wahoo Warriors that will be coming up, Auburn, Blue, uh, Auburn Bulldogs, which was will be a rematch of that incredible game. Ron Cawley started the season second in Class B. Uh, I mean, it's a good schedule for the Blue Jays uh, throughout this season. 
Yeah, uh, Wahoo. Wahoo a, is a dog this year. You know, we'll work our way down. Conestoga. There, we watch them play Louisville. Traditionally, they're going to shoot. Louisville wants to play through the inside. Uh, not recognizing a lot of names on that team, so we'll see, still see how they grow. Uh, the Wahoo. Wahoo's a nightmare. There's seven seniors. There's nine kids who will probably play college basketball on that. Nine kids. Wow. Who will play college basketball? That'd be a lot if it was a baseball team. Yeah. NAI level players. Uh, I think seven of them have been offered. Uh, six have been offered, but you know Marcus Glock is a college basketball player. Uh, they're the favorite. Uh, Auburn is huge this year. Auburn has a 6'8 kid who didn't play a lot last year. Was he a freshman last year? I don't know what he was. I, I didn't even know who he was. And like Obviously, I, I'm familiar with Auburn. Mo's got like, mad at me the other day at school because I, like, I wish I'd look at the scout. And he's like, watch, watch this 6'8 kid. And I'm like, oh, the 6'8 kid. But they play through the inside. They start three posts as well as a binder. Um, yeah, we're, we're, you know, the good thing is, is it's going to be a good litmus test for, for where we are. Koger hits a tough shot to keep his, uh, we've talked about, he's a nice little shooter and got it there. But, yeah, it's going to be fun. There's no doubt, folks, so make sure you stay with us as Luke Clark gets in the paint. The hammer with a good pass underneath the Clark. What a pass there. As Dane Jacobson, look at this passing going on by the Blue Jays, and Drake Zimmerman finally finishes it off. A lot of cuts, a lot of guys getting hit on the cuts, a lot of guys getting to the inside and being surrounded and not forcing anything. It's good basketball. Such a good point. I tend to credit so much of the passing, but man, the movement away from the ball, so good. Can Dane get the steal? He does. Can he put it down? No, he'll put it nicely <laughs> off the glass. <laughs> maybe, maybe someday. <laughs> no, but Dane, Dane's athletic, I'll tell you. You know, Brad was a good athlete. Obviously, they get it all from Stacy. Uh, Tyler can't jump, but you know, Dane's got more kale in him than he's got Tyler in him, that's for sure. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to make sure he knows that came from you. I think Dane can dunk. That's what I yeah, that's what I, I do too. I think he can dunk pretty easily. And here comes Desmond Cole. We're down to four minutes to go in this 51-15 lead for the Big Blue. And Wahlberg will try to work against Tease. Tease spotted him up, and they'll call him for a foul. You know, once again, pretty, pretty docile night for Dawson. Uh, you know, but I'm telling you, the, the role that Dawson and Jackson will play in this in this team this year will be huge. And Dawson has gotten so much bigger and stronger. I'm telling you, he just, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not super athletic, but I feel like there hasn't been a lot of high school kids except for maybe Max and Kale that out-rebound me. Dawson out-rebounded me every single eight weeks that we played. And I, I, could, not, I could not get rebounds versus him. He's very athletic. Wolberg hits the second one. So tell me, what's he do? What's he do that's so effective for Tees uh, on the rebounding front? He, he wants to. He's got a motor. He's got a drive. Um, he's a big, wide body, but he's not heavy. I, I think he just literally floats in the air. Um, Great look inside to Jacobson by the hammer. They're going to battle underneath, and they're going to call a push, I think, on Zimmerman. Yeah, yeah. and again, they're going to send uh, the troops in here. Same deal there. That, that's just the want to. A lot of Drake wanted that loose ball. He's, he's shown he wants to play defense tonight. Um, yeah, those are just things that get overlooked sometimes when we talk about box scores. And, you know, Derek Tan just had 14 points versus Burke. You know, well, Derek took great shots. And Derek got a lot of rebounds and busted in transition. Um, and that's the difference between being someone who fills up a stat sheet and someone who's a good basketball player. So we got Walker. Grail in the game, Isaac Carson, Derek Tonges, Landon Mose. Both of those two are freshmen. And then you've got Drake Zimmerman. And here's a second free throw by the freshman from Arlington. He can't get it to go, but Blue Jays track it down. Mose comes out of there with it. Landon gets it to his fellow freshman, Tonges. They'll work that right side. That's number six, number seven. There's the eighth pass on this possession, the ninth. We're up to double digit passing and Tonjes will go into the paint, dumps it off. They're gonna call a block. So 11 passes on that possession, Jordan. It's a good team ball. You know, to kind of maybe to work back to my last point, you know, let's, let's say that Drake is, or Drake or Dawson wanna be a scorer. 
you know, that their role is they're a scorer. Well, on this team, they might be the seventh best scorer. You know, what's what's their value? They're not adding a lot of value to the team. But when you when you say that Dawson's goal is a rebounder, he's the best rebounder on the team, Dawson becomes priceless. Drake's the best defender on this team. He wins 50-50 balls, he becomes priceless. So that's kind of maybe when we say, you know, Dawson, uh, we talk about his rebounding so much, that, that's when he becomes a, a extremely valuable player to this team. And that was a nice shot by the freshman, Oliver Ladehoff. He makes it 51-19. They get it down to Zimmerman. A little bit of a shove, but they're going to say, Halley's, his argument here to the official is, look, I've I, I got a right to that spot. And uh, if, if you beat them to that spot. So, in my opinion, he was still sliding over. Uh, Drake was initiating a lot of the contact, but Drake beat him to the spot. So now this, I love these minutes from Drake. I, when Drake's out here, I want you to be the most aggressive player in Ashland Greenwood basketball history because now your role is to, is to work on your skills, get in and score the basketball. See, folks, I told you he was an apologist for the officials right away. He jumps to their defense on that, didn't you, Jordan? I'm telling you, I'm, I'm back in the stripes. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> we're one game into the season, and I've already got one game <laughs> under my belt. I don't, I don't know if I can keep this up all year. Well, we need you to be an apologist for the officials. These guys work hard, and we don't have enough of them. And quite frankly, they do a better job than we all realize. And so here's a shot that misses. And the Blue Jays will walk it up. Isaac Carson, crossover dribble, nicely done. He's looking for a back cut there from Tonjes, who lays it up and over the rim. Now, that was the crazy thing about the, we have a one, we have a two versus six last night and C1 to open the season for both teams. And uh, we know there was a college kid working there. And there was uh, a couple of refs I hadn't seen before. They did, they did a great job, but I mean, Jim Weeks, and, and Malcolm's crowd was crazy. You know, that's a huge game. Oh, I bet. People should be chomping at the bit for that, but we're just out of reps. Um, obviously why I was working today, because they had to scrape the bottom of the barrel of the ref, the ref pool. <laughs> kind of kind of joking, kind of not. It was it was an emergency situation, so. Yeah. You know, be nice to refs. Yeah, absolutely. Boy, that's a great message. And by the way, really like this Tim Halley as well from Arlington. He fights hard out there. He plays with a lot of intensity. And here's a shot that's blocked by Isaac Carson. Got up there on Tyler Otter, just checked in the game. We got a minute 24 to go, Blue Jays up 55-19. Here's a little dribble drive by Skylar Logeman. And now we got a whistle and a push, and let's see who they call this song. Will it be on Mose, will it be on Zimmerman? And they're gonna call the fourth foul on Zimmerman. 118 to go here. Blue Jays are going to start the season with a victory. And there's Leda Hoff, another freshman. We got some nice talent out here with Leda Hoff. Uh, you've got uh, obviously the two freshmen from the Blue Jays. Second free throw, no good. And there's Derek Tonjes right on cue. Blue Jays will set up here with 109 to go in the game. Don't forget, post game, we're going to have. The Ashland coaches, Coach Mose will be up here. And we hope to grab one of the players as Zimmerman will kiss it off the glass, as Bill Raftery always likes to say, and it's 57-20. Halley working hard. And <laughs> Drake says, I think he got me that time. No call by the officials. We're under a minute to go as Isaac Carson goes hold. Or hard to the hole, and he is fouled, and he's going to go to the line to shoot two. Yeah, good drive. Drake can toughen up on the other end over there. <laughs> <laughs> and I've, I've worked with Drake a lot, and I know Terry would, Terry, Terry would agree with Oh, that. I agree. I agree. I think that official's like, look, it's under a minute to go. I'm not going to call that right now. <laughs> yeah, was, As Carson missed that first free throw. You know, the the – the thought process is that if it doesn't impede the flow of the game, you know, do you need to call it? So what Drake needs to do there is after he gets fouled, he needs to fall down. So the ref either has to call travel or a foul. Kind of joking, kind of not. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for laughing. It makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> ref humor, you well, know. Well, I was, right, I was writing down a, a number here. Ref humor is dry, man. <laughs> ref humor, I like it. 
Here comes the freshman the other way for Arlington. His shot is blocked. Tell you, we're getting some good minutes, though, for that young man. And he's stepping up and taking the most of them. I have a feeling you're going to see Ladehoff, Oliver Ladehoff, getting a little more minutes here for Arlington. I mean, this, this was the JV game, and, I mean, every part of the JV game was, was really competitive. Uh, Ashland kind of broke it open a little bit in the second quarter, but then coming out of halftime, Arlington really brought that intensity, and, and it was kind of a dogfight through and through. So you remove that second quarter, it was, it was a pretty straight-up game. And Ladoff hits both of those free throws. He's now four of six on the night. We've got 16 seconds to go. Blue Jays up 58-22, and I have a feeling Coach Moses is going to just instruct his team to hold on to that basketball. We got eight, seven, and that's exactly what's going to happen. So the Blue Jays come out in defense of their championship from a year ago, and they win handily 58-22 to over the Arlington Eagles. One of the last times these two teams will meet in the Nebraska Capital Conference. In fact, maybe the last. Of course, you've got conference tournament in January, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, really just a complete game, Jordan, for the Big Blue as they roll here 58-22. You know, it, it, went, it went as well as you'd hope. You know, you got you to hit shots if you want to play this style of basketball and you have to complete passes and you have to fly around on defense, and that's exactly what they did. So... Um, I think that they should be excited for what they're doing. Um, but I think, you know, there's going to be challenges coming, and there's going to be challenges coming plenty early. So you can be happy. You can be very, very excited for, for how it went because it went very well. Well, Elliot, you're a part of the student body here. And by the way, the Blue Jays are going to sing the fight song. Uh, and I got to ask you, your pers you know, your perspective on this, when the teams are winning and uh, we get into, you know, winter sports here, I imagine it just kind of buoys all you guys through school. Talk about that a little bit. Absolutely. It's fun to look forward to games during uh, December, January, and February when we're winding down to Christmas break or just coming back from it. It's nice to be able to come out here on Saturday or any day throughout the week and just know it's probably it's gonna be a great it's gonna be a great game. And they got it tonight, like I said, they got the uh, student body going in there, so I don't know if we can grab any of the players tonight. I'll go. I'll go. Make okay. A, I'll go make a run. Elliot, you keep the headset on. You think of some good questions. That Absolutely. Right. We'll uh, we'll get Elliot asking a few questions, and Elliot, you're going to get a chance to help me break down this game. But uh, one of the first questions I've got for you, buddy, here before we get to some scores, is you know this Blue Jay D. I know the talk tonight's going to be, hey, we've got some scoring. We hit a lot of threes. You know, we drive the rim, but. You've played some hoops throughout your years. How daunting is this defense? It's it, pretty scary. When you know that at any level, just knowing that you're going to get to pressure on you up, all the way up the court, and then once you get across half court, you grow up, might get trapped if you go to the wrong spot, or you're just going to have a dude to just even farther up on you. And then uh, when you throw it into the paint, if you're a big man, and if you just get three or four guys crashing in it, into uh, just block your shot. It's pretty daunting. Well, it is indeed, and I'll tell you, let me just tell you this, partner. Um, I, I, unless I have this wrong, I only have three players scoring from Arlington tonight, and that is Weston Wolberg. He had six, seven points for Trent Koger, and uh, Oliver Ladehoff, the freshman, had six. So I don't know if that's right. That can't be right, right? 22, I'm missing three. I missed a, a, a three bucket. So it could be that four, four guys scored, maybe five, depending on how that three is broken mm -hmm. down. But it just shows you how this Blue Jay D can really take players out of the game, doesn't it? Yeah, and a lot of those points came uh, late in the game when uh, the game was pretty much was already broken open with uh, more bench guys in. So in, uh, like the Blue Jays' defense really shut uh, Arlington down. Like Moe's once uh, single-digit quarters, I'm pretty sure he got that each each time. Yeah, he did. In fact, nine points in the fourth, the most they gave up tonight, Elliot. Four in the third, four in the second, and five in the first. The Blue Jays, conversely, uh, had 19 in the first, 18 in the second quarter, just 10 and 11 in that third and fourth. But again, Blue Jays were kind of playing a part-time staff a little bit there. They were pulling in some guys who don't normally get a lot of minutes. So here comes Tyler Craven. We're going to get his thoughts. We'll get him with the headset. 
And Tyler, um, listen, nice start to the season. There you go. <laughs> That's the broadcaster in you. Nice start to the season in defense of your state championship. You guys come out here 58-22, uh, gave up five points in the first, four in the second. Talk about that defensive effort tonight. Yeah, you know, I thought the guys were really locked in. Um, I think they took their individual matchup and, and kind of ran with it. Uh, you know, we maybe didn't trap as much or, you know, weren't as aggressive, um, but they did a good job of just locking in one-on-one -on -one and guarding, you know, their space. The other thing that I think you're going to be really thrilled about as a coach, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine guys scored tonight. Nine guys, hello there. Nine guys scored tonight. So tell me a little bit about that kind of balance when it comes to scoring. Yeah, you know, I, I probably sound like a broken record, but we just have a lot of really good kids. And, and so when you have that, there's a lot of guys that just don't care about their ego, care about how many points they score, what their stats look like, and, and they're willing to share it a little bit. So I, I think you saw that throughout all four quarters and, and no matter who played out of our 12 guys. You know, one of the things that – I love about this offense. I'm going to give this up to Elliot here. So, Elliot, I'm going to let you ask him a couple of questions after this. But you guys were able to shoot the three tonight. You can attack the rim. By the way, on one of your possessions with Derek Tonges and Lando and, and, and Grell and all those guys that came in late, 11 passes before a shot. Quick passes, though. So talk a little bit about the, the, the dynamic aspect of that offense. Yeah, you know, Coach Moses is really good at teaching that true motion, that kind of run. Um, we're, we're fortunate to have guys with skills, and so then when you can add the conceptual side of the motion to the skills, um, I think it just makes us hard to guard. And when you have five guys that are hard to guard, uh, I wouldn't wish that upon any defense. And, and I know when we played teams like that, which we're going to in the future here, coming up Thursday already, uh, th that it gives us challenges. And yeah. so I think we give some teams challenges offensively, which is good. Elliot, I know you got something for the coach. What did you guys do to uh, overcome uh, losing a great group of uh, seniors from last year? Yeah, you know, I think we, we've harped a lot on, you know, what's your role on this team? Uh, last year, I think we had clearly defined roles, you know, once you got into the season a little bit. So we, we maybe started harping on that a little bit earlier uh, because maybe they weren't as defined just naturally like they were, you know, the year before. So, uh, you know, we kind of defined those roles for guys. I think guys figured that out. And, and again, the kids are so good and unselfish that it was just easy and, and felt natural well coach we love the start um great start to the t to the, the season i know we're going to talk a lot more this year yep absolutely all yep. right congrats on win number one and by the way i saw what happened down there i called you to get the halftime interview you were like i'm not going to go up there then you went around and ever no i'm not going to we finally got jordan child he took he got the the short straw no didn't he? i was sharing the love i said you told me to make one of those other three come up there. Uh, <laughs> off, of, off of the choice. You can spin it anyway. I love it. <laughs> hey, congrats on win number hey, one. Thanks, guys. Thanks, You Elliot. bet. Absolutely, Coach Craven. Mark, can we get the players in so they can shower real quick, and then we'll come to you? Okay, we got Mark Adele's going to get some stats. But look, yep, yeah, you bet, bud. We got Brooks Kissinger, Cade Bridges. I'll start with Cade here. He's to my left, the closest to me. Cade, you come out here on fire tonight, 13. Um, all of them in the first and second quarter, but you were just looking at that rim and there was no fear. Talk a little bit about your mindset from um, a shooting perspective tonight. A big thing we do at practice every single day is shoot, and it's for games like this when the game's a little bit slower. And it was a fast-paced game at the start, and threes just kind of changed the game is what Mo says. So practicing those quite a bit helps, and, yeah, just trust the – be confident when you're going up. You know, one of the things that we talked about in the pregame is – You've got Kate, Kale Jacobson, Max Parker, uh, obviously Evan Shepard. You know, three great senior leaders. Mm -hmm. You guys are both seniors. I want to hear from both of you on this. How do you, do you step in and make sure that that leadership on that team continues? Those guys were great leaders. How have you stepped in and, and made sure that that continues? Um, like you said, the other three were great leaders, so they gave us, like, an example to follow them, which made it a lot easier for us. So just kind of following what they did and continuing their legacy pretty much. Yeah, so yeah. let's talk about defense before I, I switch over to here to Brooks. Man, defensively, you guys were absolutely tough. Five points in the first quarter, four in the second. What did you guys execute so well to hold them down? Uh, Moe's had a pretty good scout. Moe's and TC work pretty hard all week making a scout, and we just follow that, and they say if you follow the scout, you'll execute the game, and we executed their scout, so 
game executed. I love it. That is <laughs> good. You listen, Cade. You yep. listen. I'm going to tell your parents that you do listen. From I appreciate that. They don't. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Hey, Cade, great night. Way to start. Now let's get to Brooks Kissing. Brooks, I'm going to actually have you put these on. That mic's been a little bit fussy tonight. That way we'll get the headset on. Let's start right there, uh, Brooks, on defense. Look, these guys were 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 6 6 6. They had some size tonight. Tell me a little bit about how you defended all that size because you guys really held them down. Uh, I think the biggest thing is just when they entered to the post, digging on the dribble. Um, and then when they shot, just boxing out. Uh, having Dawson and Cougar box out the bigs and then the guards cleaning up the boards. Hey, I thought your passing tonight was extraordinary. There were twice where you had windows about this big, about an inch that you could really thread a needle through. And you, you did it, and you, you found your teammates. Tell me a little bit about your passing, because it was dynamic and it was spectacular. Uh, well, you know, Kay does a good job finding the open spot for me to pass it. Jackson, uh, in transition, he just ran. He got out quick and got uh, down there. So I just got to find them, and hopefully they finish it. Yeah, well, they did in many cases tonight. Let's also talk about when you take a look at, at coming into this season, you know, we wondered how the offense would look maybe a little bit different. How have you guys worked together as a team to say, hey, we're going to put this together. We're going to make sure that it runs smoothly. Talk a little bit about that process. Our biggest focus is just moving the ball from one corner to one corner. We've been struggling a little bit in practice, uh, being stagnant in our offense. So just moving it from corner to corner, getting different actions like um, flare screens and back screens and down screens uh, will open up different opportunities for everybody. I heard Coach Mo yell at one time. He wasn't happy. Move the ball, move the ball. Did you have a couple of possessions? Oh. I didn't see many. We get a couple get of those, yeah. <laughs> so you hear him, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I bet so. One last question here. Elliot, let me ask you, do you have any questions here for Brooks? No, I don't. Okay, all right. I kind of put Elliot on the spot here. <laughs> last question, though. You come out of the gate, you get the victory here tonight. Tell me what kind of momentum that creates for you guys. Uh, we got a – it's definitely good momentum um, coming up and in, coming into Thursday against a Class B opponent. Uh, they'll be solid, and we just got to stay locked in um, during practice this week and go attack Thursday. All right, buddy. Hey, great job tonight. Thank you. Really great seeing you guys get out here and, and open up the season this way. Brooks Kissinger, yes, I want you. Um, Mark, do you want to? You want me to go with Coach Mose first, or you want to get in? You don't mind? All right, let's get Coach Mose in here. We know he's exhausted, as he was working that sideline hard. You know, Coach, this uh, we were talking on 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 air. You were working very hard tonight, working up and down that sideline. Obviously, you come into the season, you're taking nothing for granted. How did you feel like your team performed in defense of their championship? You know, you know I thought we didn't, weren't sure what it would look like, so, you know, on offense or defense, and I thought we did a, a good job. Um, offensively, I thought we moved the ball better than we did in our Jamboree game, so that was good to see. Uh, I thought the kids played unselfish and set each other up for, for some high percentage shots early, and, and uh, you know, when you're knocking down shots early, it looks pretty good. You know, so that's something we, Boy did it. Yeah. We, we just have to be careful of because they're in the late third, early fourth when we're not knocking them down. It can it can look a little different. So kind of, you know, balancing that out with, with, with getting to the basket and shooting threes is something we're going to have to figure out as the year goes on. And I thought our defense was was pretty good for most of the night. You know, they they uh, did what we asked them to do defensively and, and rebounded the ball really well. So that was what, good. What did you ask them to do defensively? You know, just, just keep things real simple and not let their bigs, uh, you know, control the boards or get easy layups, you know, force guys to their weak hand. And just the simple things like that wasn't a real, you know, in-depth or, uh, you know, high-level game plan because it's the first game of the year and, you're, you know, you're not trying to give them 400 things to think about. But can you just do our basic stuff? It was good that we got our, our press in there a little bit so we can learn from – from that on on film and show them some different adjustments and things they need to do differently you know as well as our zone defense um you know sh the the shifting and movements and what other teams do and how we counter that uh i thought it just gave us a lot to look at and a lot to learn from well i'm going to ask you one more before i turn it over to elliot but one of the things that i saw tonight i mean just spectacular ball sharing i thought brooks kissinger made a couple of passes tonight where he had a window about an, an inch wide he threaded a couple of beautiful passes. Um, 
your thoughts on how you shared the ball tonight and just the, the, the movement too, Coach, away from the basketball. It's just so good, the cutting that you guys demonstrate, which you pick up from last year. Your thoughts on all of that? Yeah, as I mentioned, it, it looked a lot better than it had in practice, and I think uh, better than it did our game Monday. They do a good job of getting to the pain and helping, so there wasn't a lot of as many opportunities as we'd like maybe to score in the lane. And that's why, you know, we shot probably more threes sometimes than we normally would because we were open. And, and again, similar to last year, we think we have pretty good shooters. So we're not going to tell them not to shoot those shots. And, and so I thought uh, other than a few possessions, you know, where, where in that second quarter we started to play fast with that with our, with our press, and we certainly want to do that. But you saw a few possessions where we just are going too fast. So to, to find that time where we slow down and where we speed up is we'll, we'll we'll take some time to figure out as we go throughout the season well let's give it up here to Elliot Goss and I know he's got a question or two for you what's it like uh, or how's the team adjusted you're not having a, like a dude who can just go out and score when they come across a tough team that's just shutting down everyone else like you had in Kale last year you know I think it goes back to that unselfishness where you have to move really really well without the ball and space the floor well so that you can create opportunities for your teammate and that's what we talk a lot about is is being active without the basketball and have good spacing so that you know we have guys that have skills uh, that, that can really do a lot of different things but they have to have the space to operate to do those things and so that's when it boils down to what are you doing off the ball and without the basketball uh, to, to help us be successful love it anything else nope. all right great question by the way coach listen nice way to start the season long ways to go but hey uh, really nice opening for you. Yep, yep. It was a good good game all around. We're, we were happy with our kids' effort. I'm sure you're going to go home and watch a little football, right? You're not going to watch any tape tonight? No, no, yeah. <laughs> it's for something like that. <laughs> I guarantee you the huddle will be on tonight. So <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Well, if you don't, take a break because you deserve it. It's a long season. It is. All right, Coach, thanks for coming up tonight. Nice win. Yep, thanks for calling all the right, game, guys. You bet. Jake Mose with win number one of the year. And that brings us to Mark Adele, who will share some numbers with us. Mark, what does it look like here when you break down these numbers for the Big Blue tonight? Well, pretty good again. We can't, uh, you can't uh, win like that and not have good numbers. Now, we cooled off, especially from three a little bit in the second half. Well, actually, from three quite a bit. But we're still, for the game, 21 of 41, 51% from the field. From three, though, we were just one of seven in the second half for seven of 21 for the game, 33%. If there's one thing, I mean, coaches always like to complain and work on something. We were just nine of 15 from the line. That is something, and that they were eight of 16 is all against uh, against um, uh, Burke. How soon we forget? Yeah, right. So, you know, we got to make a few more free throws. Now, Arlington, a lot of it was due to our man-to-man -man defense. I mean, the Blue Jays the last two, three years have played man-to-man -man as well as anybody, I think, in the in the state, if you're talking strictly man to man. So Arlington was six of 29 from the field for 21%. They were one of 12 from three. Did not hit a three the second half for 8%. But they can shoot the ball. They were nine of 12 from the line, 75% when we couldn't guard them. Mm -hmm. Rebounding. Again, there weren't a lot of rebounds. We had 23 for the game, three offensive. They had 16, two offensive. Turnovers, they cut down on their turnovers greatly the second half. Had 19 for the game. We had just six, though. Wow. And it amazes me how we can play man-to-man -man defense the way we do and A, not foul very much, and B, not turn the ball over very much. The way we, uh, you got to give credit to, to Jake Mose for those things. Yeah, without a doubt. Mark, thank you so much. Those numbers help put it in perspective in this 58-22 uh, win. Well, folks, I'm going to wrap it up. Elliot, I'll give you the final word here in this Blue Jay uh, victory to start the season. Oh. Uh -huh. Never had to do this before, Tim. <laughs> What's that? Never had to uh, sign it off before. <laughs> well, there's a first time for everybody. No, you're good, Matt. I'll just say this much, Elliot. You did a great job. How about that? Thank you. 
excellent question to Coach Moe's there at the end. Excellent question. So, anyway, partner, good working with you. Good working with Jordan and the crew earlier today. Brad, you want to come up? No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Folks, I'm going to sign off. For that entire crew, I'm Tim Washburn saying so long. We'll see you Tuesday.